What's up, future respiratory therapist? In this video, we're gonna talk about the difference between albuterol versus levalbuterol. You're not gonna to wanna to miss this. Let's dive in. All right, so as I said, we're talking albuterol versus levalbuterol. What's the difference? Why does it matter? Well, we're gonna explore that here in just a second. But first, don't forget to check out the Respiratory Coach Academy. You can get here by visiting respiratorycoach.com where you'll find several resources designed to aid and assist you in passing your MBRC credentialing exams on the first attempt so you can get on with being the registered respiratory therapist you wanna be. So do me a favor, go check that out. Uh, let's talk about albuterol versus levalbuterol. Now, I, I like teaching pharmacology. Uh, not everybody loves pharmacology, so I realize this is probably not going to be a popular video. But I think it's important to understand, and there's something really cool here that I hope you take away from this that uh, will help you go out there and understand the differences in these two medications. Now, we're going to talk chemistry here for just a second. Not deep, hard, nerdy chemistry, but just just some basic chemistry. See, when we talk about albuterol, what we know is that albuterol consists of, of two isomers. Okay, an isomer is basically a chemical compound and, and a mirror of that. So it's the exact same mirror. So what we see here is that we have one isomer here and in a mirrored reflection is the isomer is the second isomer. Okay, now what we know is that albuterol has an R and an S isomer. Now, this is what you want to remember from this, okay? The S isomer is basically inactive. Egan's actually says it right here on page 724, 36th of chapter, 13th edition. It basically says, although the S isomer is physiologically inactive on adrenergic receptors, there's evidence that it's not completely inactive. You see this S isomer, when you think of S, think of sinister. It's bad, okay? We don't like this portion of the formula. The S isomer is essentially the bad guy. And the R isomer is the good guy. So we have to remember, why are we giving albuterol? To help relieve any type of reversible airflow obstruction, asthma, uh, chronic bronchitis, different, different patients who present with bronchoconstriction uh, due to, due to uh, smooth muscle constriction, also referred to as bronchospasm, they might be indicated and might respond to a bronchodilator. Albuterol is a common one that we give. What we know is that the R isomer is the one that, that contains the active ingredients. The, it's the isomer that creates the bronchodilation um, effects. And we like that. We, we, we like what the R isomer does. The S isomer on the other side is not so good. It's bad. It's sinister. This is the bad guy. So, um, and when I say it's the bad guy, like what am I, what do I mean by that? Like what, what exactly, what exactly do I mean by a bad guy? Well, Egan's list actually a whole bunch of things that, uh, that it, its effects are, I'm not going to get into all of them, but the big one that I want you to realize is, is that it, antagonizes the bronchodilating effects of the R isomer. So let's just think about that for a second. This guy over here is out here trying to, to bronchodilate to, to open up our patient's airways. And this isomer in the medication that we are giving is working against that effect. It's antagonizing it. it, it it's working to, to diminish the effects of the R isomer. Um, and so we know that that's one of them. It also increases the contractile response to bronchial tissues to histamine and or leukotrienes. Now remember, histamine and leukotrienes are inflammatory mediators. And the S isomer increases the contractile response to those inflammatory mediators. And so we, we can see right now that that's not good, right? Like that's, that's actually bad. Now we don't like the S isomer, okay? And so what we did, not we, but what the manufacturers of levalbuterol did, also known as Zopinex, is they said, why don't we make the same drug and just eliminate the S isomer? So what they created was a single R, R isomer formulation of albuterol, call it levalbuterol. Okay, now here's where it kind of gets cool, at least for me. What we know is that 
albuterol is both of these. And we know that the standard dose for albuterol is 2.5 milligrams. That's typically the standard unit dose of albuterol. Now, if we cut out the S isomer, then what we see is that this is Lev albuterol. So this is albuterol here, and then this is Lev albuterol here. And this brings us back to how do I remember all these dosages? Well, what we know is that Lev albuterol standard adult dose is 1.25 milligrams. Now, what do we notice here? Lev albuterol is just the single R isomer. We cut out the, the S isomer. So essentially, it's half of standard albuterol, which is also not coincidentally the adult dosage of Lev albuterol. 1.25 is exactly half of 2.5 milligrams. And what we know is, is that with the 1.25 milligrams, we see similar side effects, but we do see a higher peak effect on forced expiratory volume in one second with an eight hour duration compared with racemic albuterol. When we say a racemic albuterol, we're talking about this formulation of standard albuterol. So what we see is when we remove the antagonizing effects of the S isomer, then we get the pure R isomer with greater effects with longer duration. And that's what we know. Now you can cut this in half even more. You can go down to 0.63 and there's a dosage available on that as well. And then there's also a pediatric dose available. Cut it in half again to 0.31 milligrams. Those are your standard dosages for Lev albuterol. 1.25, 0.63, and 0.31 when you're talking about Lev albuterol. These bronchodilators are in the same classification of bronchodilators. They are short-acting beta-2 agonists. It's very important to, to realize that. If you have a patient who's receiving albuterol and you're seeing severe tachycardia, tremors, um, side effects, you say, hey, maybe we need to switch over to Lev albuterol to see if that formulation of the drug will yield better results with fewer side effects. So there you have it. That's the difference between albuterol and Lev albuterol. It co really comes, all comes down to just eliminating the S isomer and you're left with just the good guy. So that's uh, albuterol versus Lev albuterol. Uh, I'm Respiratory Coach. You're here on YouTube right now. Do me a favor if you haven't done so already. Please hit the subscribe button. We'd love for you to join our community of subscribers and be notified whenever a new video posts. I really appreciate that. Also, um, Instagram and TikTok at Respiratory Coach, LinkedIn at Joe Lewis, and respiratorycoach.com to get the resources you need to be successful on your TMC and CSE exams on the first attempts. Remember, average is easy. Don't be it.